Hello everyone, we Hi. are live and on location at Adobe Max in Los Angeles, so welcome. Okay. I'm your host, Christine Arth, and I'm here with Clara Ancasa. Welcome, Clara. Yeah, thanks. She is one of the top talent winners from this year's Adobe Design Achievement Awards, and she is in from, where are you in from? Uh, so I flew in from New York. Mm -hmm. I went to st school at RISD, but I'm originally from Indonesia. Nice, so awesome, so very worldly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So Clara, tell us a little bit about the project that you submitted and uh, then I'm going to show everybody. All right. Well, I did two pro I submitted two projects that got in the Adobe Design Award. <laughs> I try. I really I really wanted the free Adobe Creative Cloud. Okay? Yeah, right. You're like, I want two years. Can I get yeah. two? I submitted no, twice. No, I, I only get one unfortunately, yeah, but bummer. but no, one is still really great. One's still good. Yeah. Yeah. So, it was two projects. One is called Oolong the Llama. And Let's check it out. Yeah, so it is this All one. All right, well, we can check out Oolong the Llama first. Yeah. So cute. Yeah, so this was the project where I discovered my love of llamas. I love um, this. Oh my basically, God. it's a messaging sticker app I created when I was interning with Fairtree Media. It's a design company uh -huh. based in Boston. So they gave me the opportunity to create a collection <laughs> of llamas for uh -huh. a messaging sticker app. So I need my tea. Yeah, no, I love tea. Um, so yeah, it was great fun creating the character uh, and also coming up with different scenarios and showing different emotions. They're so cute. Oh, this is my favorite. Oh, How cute is you. that? Ah. Yeah, this was really fun. I love both illustrating and animation. So this was a good project to combine both Yeah, of those. extremely. And then let's also look at your other project that you submitted. Yeah. Tell Tales. Right. Ooh. So. Yeah, this is the other project that got the award, and this one is an anthology of three creepy comics. This is a very different one. Very from different, <laughs> yeah. Like that one's all soft and friendly and like cute, and this one's all like. Ugh. Yeah, no, I have like a like broad, Edward Gorey kind yeah, of. Yeah, I have yeah. a broad spectrum. I go from like cute to creepy really fast. I like there, that. There's no like middle oh, ground. Oh yeah, the two creepy <laughs> twins, right? Yeah. So this yeah. is based on true crime stories. That's really stuck with me. I'm like, I have this weird obsession with true crime. And Love so it. this is where I expressed it through my comics based on three stories of three basically really creepy women in history. And Ooh. this is also me playing out the paneling because I'm really into making comics. So it was an wow. overall really interesting research project as well yeah. as a really cool exercise. Well, you get to fulfill a little bit of your own passion too yeah, in like multiple exactly. ways, both the you know, uh, the, the information of this treacherous comic, but yeah. also in illustration. So. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. Wow, really interesting too, and very like graphic novel feeling. This is awesome. Yeah, this was really fun to make, and I this actually won another award before the Adobe Award. Ooh. And to think this just started with me being really into creepy stuff. So multi-award winner Clark here. Yeah. So out there in chat, if you guys have any questions, please let us know. Um, I know we also have your portfolio up, but do you want to hop in and start getting to work? I mean, because I know you're going to be working on something interesting and new today. Yeah, well, in case anyone wants to check out any other works, this is my website. Yeah, Just beautiful work. Peak. You can always check out more of these little oolong the llamas over here, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful illustrations. Thanks. So great. So why don't we hop on over to your computer and you can talk us through what you're going to do today. Right. So for Telltales, I can show you a bit of uh, my process on how I made that because mm -hmm. Telltales is predominantly traditional work. I did it mostly in graphite and ink, but Adobe did play a large role in you know, putting it all together. So I'll show you like a, an example of how I put the page together. Nice. So first, this is the original page. This was an A3 graphite drawing on Bristol. So I drew it by hand and then scanned it, cleaned it up in Photoshop. And then after that, I like to add a lot of textural elements into my work. Very so cool. what I what I do first, I would just like I call them just splotches. I would paint a lot of splotches. And, and you work manually like with real ink and paper and then yeah, scan it in? Yeah I do. Because like it's more fun that way, and also I have no expectations in what comes out, so like I can't be disappointed. Exactly. So I just like make a lot of swatches, make a lot of inks, scan it in, and I also add like other elements that I want to include in the background. For this particular scene, I did like creepy hands. Oh yeah. And so there's a bunch of inky hands right there. I like the inky hands. 
they look great. They look so realistic. Yeah, like you actually it, went in and drew them, but is it's it really just with fun. ink? It's just with ink. Like wow. I would do this with my hand and be like, oh, okay, it's yeah, like that. Yeah. But like otherwise, using your own hand as a model. Yeah, honestly. So and cool. Yeah. So those are the assets, and after that. We have a lot of fun people out in yes. chat. Linda, Monir, Voodoo, Oh Sanam, my god, I recognize my name. Deb, Shantanu, right. Celine. Everyone's like, ooh, I love this. So adorable. Right. The mamas, we love them. Yeah. Well, um, so this was the final paneling I did ooh. for the page. Yeah. So I'll clean it out a bit. And here are the splotches. Mm -hmm. From like the original like three splotches, I basically just duplicated them and Rescale, rotate it so it doesn't look like I'm copy pasting, but Very I'm cool. actually yeah, just copy pasting. Yeah, in Photoshop and then multiplying them on yeah, top of each yeah. other to make it feel even more intense. Just like layering. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, same thing with the hands. It's a great technique. Yeah, wow. it, and it, it's also it's real. That's what's really fun about having traditional assets because you have you make way too much, so you have options. Totally. And even if you don't have enough. You can play around with, with the transform tool in Photoshop. Yeah, and, and it really gives a depth of field where you feel like it's a little bit more creepy mm -hmm, and yeah. kind of scary in this way, which is pretty good for what you're trying to create. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Opacity is also super helpful. Yeah, exactly. Opacity, overlay, oh, ghostly, and multiply. Right? Yes. Yeah, it'll make it feel more ghost-like. Yes. I live and breathe Photoshop. Photoshop is the best, guys. <laughs> I love that, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm an Illustrator girl, but you know, Photoshop is pretty amazing. Yes. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna get in there on the Wacom, aren't you? Yes, I am. So, I actually like have something new that I've been working oh. on. Um, this I is back like to this. my cute style. Uh, enough with the creepy. The, the you're like, we're going back cute. We went yeah. creepy and cute and creepy and back to cute. Yeah, me. so I always do my sketches traditionally just because it's like less pressure. Because otherwise, if I sketch digitally, it's like the well, undo button is right there yeah. and I never finish. But you yeah. also have now a map of your own work that yeah, then you exactly. can lead yourself down a way and you know when you want to mm -hmm. recreate or change your mind, and it's yours. Yeah, and so, oops. All done. So, chat, Maybe. if you have any questions for Clara while she's here, yeah. now is the right time. Otherwise, Wait, so you'll have to up. save them and come on over to Adobe Live Table oh, and yeah. catch her right after this oh, show. Like, well, guess what? Turns out I have to calibrate my pen. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, let's calibrate so, it. Let's calibrate it first. So while we calibrate the pen, we can hop questions. over and take a look at some of the other examples of what Claire's work is on her site. Yeah. So I'm going to walk you guys through couple of these. Actually, there's so many beautiful illustrations that you Thank have you. in here. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. I... Ooh. Oh. This is great. <laughs> I was like, hey guys, a little technical difficulty. There. Yeah, because I can't like calibrate my pen right now. This is very typical. Honestly, I'm not surprised. But well, that happens. That is, I think that this is just what uh, designers do. You know what? I'm just not meant to draw, but that's okay because I have like the file prepared with other stuff to show you. Amazing. Okay. So, okay, I cheated. I, w I was like ready for this to not work, so I lied. I'm not. I made the full illustration. Oh wow, me. that was quick. See, she yeah, calibrated so her I, pen. I did it. I did it. And I, we went back over, yes, and I, it was there. I calibrated. You just missed it, but like, yes, I did the live illustration. <laughs> That's already. some magician work right there. Yeah, no, yes, that, trickery. Mm. Yes, no. Follow me on Instagram to find out how I did it. Um, <laughs> Actually, they were kind of curious. Ernie had a question on: um, Did you? What did you use to create the animations for the llama? Oh yeah, so. For some of the animations, I animated it frame by frame in Photoshop. Those mm -hmm. are for like the more like complicated moves, like with the head banging. Right. But for the simpler ones, with just like the butt swaying, I use After Effects. So it's a mix of both. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. everyone is really interested in the in the drawings. They do think that they're very cute. <laughs> Thank and then you. also Ernie mentioned that you could use Fresco now for those blotches, so that's pretty cool. That is true. Do you yes. use Fresco? I just tried it yesterday. I went pretty to several rad, workshops. Huh? I love the watercolor textures. I'm just like, oh, yeah. it, it's kind it of life changing. Like yeah, just no, like the earlier cool. show that we were on with Thano mm -hmm. and Otto, they had the XD co-editing, which is also mm -hmm. a life changing event for mm -hmm. any designer that's working in XD. So, mm -hmm. yeah, to be said. So what else did you end up doing for this one? And tell us a little bit about the illustration, what she is, and okay. why. Well, um, so a lot of the illustrations I do in my downtime when I'm just like mindlessly doodling, uh -huh. I just want to seem like I have a life and I'm busy, I would just draw a <laughs> lot of it. plants and just 
anything that's around me. I, I use a lot of like nature-based things as inspiration. Mm -hmm. And so those are like my go-to go Are these doodle. like mushrooms? Oh, I'm sorry. They're like leafy things. It's really cool. I, Does she have a name or her character? Is she like a... Um, she seems very earthy and old. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I kind of created her based on like a mother nature kind of figure. I have not in this demo was how I combine traditional textures to mm -hmm. digital drawings because this drawing would have been done like completely digitally, but it would look traditional because what I would do, I would, oh, so this was the color swatch that I prepared for this. Mm -hmm. And these three colors I actually took from this. So Very what cool. I would do in my illustrations, I would prepare like several color options. So I do a lot of like watercolor swatches just mm -hmm. because I like to overlay it on top of my digital drawings because I like the uh, watercolor textural feel of it. So these were the color combinations I chose. And from these, I chose, I picked color pick these three colors mm -hmm. and I find that using minimal colors really help because I get really indecisive with what colors I want to use so keeping... is that your normal process you'll create some watercolor mm -hmm. palette and then mm -hmm. you'll go from that and then pick more specific colors in Photoshop yeah yeah the watercolor really helps because I don't plan what color it turns out it's just like oh, a more natural that's, effect yeah from that's, a merging. Nice, that's a nice mistake so nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes mistakes can actually bring something mm. really beautiful and fruitful. So yeah, that's great. exactly. So let's see. So what I would do is I would use these colors to block out the flats. Mm -hmm. And I have it somewhere. So after I block block out the color. So oh, okay, nice. so before this was textured, underneath I would have I blocked out the shapes that I wanted to fill out, for example, these leaves, I wanted it to have like this pinky, pinkish, mm -hmm. reddish color. And that just like to help me like figure out what texture I want to use later. And knowing that this is the one I chose to be red, mm -hmm. I would later on go to this folder, which I have created with the specific watercolor texture. So I can just like drag it down to where I put the colors. And once I drag it there, I oh, put nice. it on top of the. Uh, so you're really black getting colors. in a little bit more depth, and mm -hmm. you're getting that textural feel. But yeah. did you ended up masking it out earlier yes, on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So cool. It was the fl the flat colors that mm -hmm. you know create the shape, and then after that, I figured out okay, this is the color, this is the shape. Now all I got to do is take out the texture put it on top of that layer, and then create a clipping mask. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Well, Stephanie is also saying amazing. So thank ah, you for joining us, Stephanie. Too. And Ernie is also saying it's a very interesting workflow. Um, yeah, I'd love to have you talk a little bit more about the workflow and like yeah. explain some of the inspiration that you have when you are drawing, as well as like what your ideation process is for creating. Mm -hmm. Did it calibrate? No, it did not. I oh. mean, see, it went like, the tip of the pen is somewhere on the screen, but it's corresponding to somewhere else on the screen. Oh no! Guys, this is just great. <laughs> well, Things let's are going see. really well. <laughs> All right, well maybe it'll keep calibrating. In the meantime, mm -hmm. talk us through a little bit of your inspiration for designing and drawing some of these. So, especially with Telltales, we can, um, we can take a look over at my computer. And when we go back up to the beginning of Telltales, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your inspiration as far as like, not just that you liked the scariness of yeah. it, but the process and how long did it take you? Um, well, this was a final project for a class, so it took about a month. That's it? To draw all of these? Yeah, wow. so like a week for Impressive. the research, another for like the planning, the actual writing, figuring mm -hmm. out the pacing and how I would do the panels and then yeah. a week for the drawing and creating all the assets and then the another week for like the hellish composition and like Incredible. Printing. Yeah. And um, you, did you do a lot of the similar process? Maybe you can talk us through that because you mm -hmm. were just mentioning how you masked out a lot of the watercolors and mm -hmm. what you're creating for um, the mother nature look that you just showed us. But then also here, it looks kind of similar, but there's a bit of an edge to this. So 
Is that something that was naturally drawn, like watercolor, or was it masked out and then used in Photoshop? No, that's like the original wow. um, ink drawing. Mm -hmm. So it, it's based just, I would like make really, really thin sketches with pencil yeah. just to like guide me on where I want the ink to go and then I would make a clean edge and then everything in the middle just add water and all Incredible. of that. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, and then this is also showing some of that process that you were talking mm -hmm. about earlier. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Actually, I can try to like make up for the awful calibration right now and see if I can color in this creature. That's great. We'll see guys. We'll see if I mess up. And if I mess up, that is fine. That's good. That's what the process is all yeah, about. Yeah, no. Showing real world live yeah, messing maybe, up for maybe whatever I what we want to do. Yeah, because sometimes you bring out brilliant things when you make mistakes. Yeah. Like you said earlier, mm -hmm. when you're bringing watercolor out, you don't know yet what the color palette's going to be. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you find something that's naturally been created mm -hmm. that inspires you to create this beautiful palette. Yeah. All right, let's see if I can do this. Oh, so yeah. So I, I color picked the green turquoise ish color. I'm bad at colors. <laughs> um, and then I colored. Okay. Oh, I like this. All right. It's working. I can do this. We got this calibration. I can do this. We're working. We do this. Now we're cooking with gas. We, this got, is we good. got this. We got yeah. this. Yeah. Ha, yeah. Love it. Now yes. she's kind of wicked. I like it. Yeah, who knows? Maybe she is. I haven't yeah. completely figured it out yet. Maybe the character has layers. She could be like both Mother Nature and also Wicked. Totally. Or know. she could just be a caterpillar woman. That is you true. You know, like they have those naturally green skins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she could be all of the above. Let us know, chat. We always love to hear what you have to say and join us. Tell us if you're here at Max. We'd love to see you afterwards. Ooh. Oh, hey, Sumi. She says, wow. Hello. I know. All right. So I did the skin with this green and I kind of want to do a darker green just to show like a slightly different hue for the like leafy body. Uh-huh. And so I clean your layer. Nice. And, okay. I love her little body. It's like a cute little dress of feathers. Yeah. It's very sweet. Ooh. All right. Yeah, Monier, you have got a good point. He's like, life is better when we're sharing, caring, giving, <laughs> and living. He always has the best advice. It's true. That is very true. All the way, Monier. All the way. This is my first live stream, so like... I love it. You're doing great. Wow. This is super fun. So guys out there in chat, tell us, are you at max? And if not, you have to come next year. It's super fun, guys. Yeah. What has been some of the best parts for you so far? Honestly, it's meeting all the people, especially the other Adobe Top Talent awardees that yeah. I've gotten the chance to meet because, you know, we're all in the same hotel, we mm -hmm. do stuff together, and mm -hmm. it's nice to see everyone's work because everyone's super talented in their own way. It's, I don't know, I'm starstruck and I admire everyone that I've been meeting in this Adobe Max. And also, I just like met, met one of my favorite illustrators. So oh, amazing. I'm still like, who was ooh, it? Starstruck. Uh, Sean. I don't want to like butcher her last name, but like amazing. You're like, oh, oh. Sean, if you're watching, I love you so much. You're like, Sean, if you're watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> kind of nerding out a little bit. We're like, oh my god, Sean. Yeah, no, I was like, oh my god, hello. That's so cool. Yeah, I think there's definitely nothing better than being able to see some of the people that you look up to and meet them in person and know that we're all in it together, especially here at Adobe Max. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great conference, of course, and there's so many interesting topics definitely. and sessions that we've been able to cover. Okay, so. Oh, nice. Good. So you've got these on some layers. Yeah. Smart that you put them on different ones. Yes. Always Make labeling the so layers. Many layers, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a Always. label layer? I usually, am, lay, layer I, usually am not, I usually am not, but for the purpose of like the stream. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, it keeps it very organized, so that's mm -hmm. always nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually not this organized. Otherwise, it's just like layer one. Da -da -da -da, yeah, 100. I know, me too. <laughs> I'll like wait until the very end and then I'll start to establish a folder system. Yeah, and then I'll exactly. start to name them and compile them. And then only when I'm handing it off to someone else will it look very, very good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I understand it, you know? So. Completely, completely. So this oh, is Oh cool, so you're bringing in the texture. Yeah, so nice. after I figure out what color I want for whatever, 
I would bring the texture down, create the clipping mask. Mm -hmm. and, now, and so now that's the color of the body, but I kind of think it's too dark. Yeah. So, Oh, so I would you can just move it around. I would move it around because the great thing about watercolor textures, it has a lot of variety in just mm -hmm. one swatch. See, so oh, now, nice. now I can get like yeah. the lighter area. A little lighter on the fa on the face and the, the area. This is yeah. great. Yeah. And even if I want to like change it up a bit more, I would add adjustment layers. I don't know like that. Let's Super. She's coming out. to life right Please. before our eyes. Let's make it kind of brighter. Okay. And now we can do the body. And I want to do another green. And this is why I copy paste a lot of the textures just so I don't have to keep mm -hmm. cutting it out of the original Smart, layer. Yeah. So I drag it down again. And then there you go. Clipping mask. And since I wanted this one to be slightly darker anyway, this works out. Super cool. Yeah, so that's just like an example oh, I love of my it. process. If you want to see the whole finished thing, check it out on Instagram. Because <laughs> I'm not going to so finish it good. in this session. Yeah, no, but this is great. You really start to see the texture come to life and mm -hmm. you start to have that idea of the depth of the character that you're trying yeah. to create. Mm -hmm. um, so you, can't, you are uh, usually working and masking with Photoshop. And then, mm -hmm. but you do often start from sketch and do you always use a Wacom? Um, I do. Sometimes I go back and forth between all traditional, sometimes it's all digital. Yeah. And when it's all digital, often it's Wacom. But now I also use the iPad since we have Adobe Fresco now. Yeah. Oh, hey guys, look at us. Now we're over there. Yeah. Ah. What happened? Oh. <laughs> it's always fun to see a different view of the <laughs> stage. <laughs> Paco sneaking up okay. on us. <laughs> wow, I didn't know there was a different view. Oh, Avril said, so organized and so inspiring. Monia oh, says the same know. thing. And Cedar Stone is very oh, much applauding. Yay. So this is pretty awesome. So what are your plans after Adobe Max? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> That's it's, very honest. I like it. This is so fun. I'm meeting like so many people. But as an introvert, this is so exhaust <laughs> exhausting. I'm going to spend like three days not talking to anyone. So I like, love I'm it. Excited. I absolutely love it. Well, Clara, yeah. it was so lovely having you. Beautiful mm. illustrations. Thank, Thank you. you again. And congratulations on being the top talent Thank this so year. Much. And you guys stick with us. We're at Max for the rest of the day. And we'll be mm. back tomorrow with some more student winners. So thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.